start our visit by going into the castle. So that's back all the way to Roman times, but what we see here was mostly built in the 15th to the 18th century. Uh, the castle was built by uh, Enrique Guzman, which was part of the wealthy Guzman family, which basically ruled all the coast uh, of Cadiz. <laughs> There are several chambers in here where you can uh, read more about the history of the castle and there are also uh, videos that you can see and uh, you can press English and they have English subtitles which is pretty cool. Um, so the castle has a really turbulent history. Uh, it's been, uh, first of all it was partly destroyed by the Lisbon earthquake which was in 1755 but after that, it was hurricanes. It was the French came and uh, took over the castle. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's got a really, really long history of destructions, basically. Uh, the locals in uh, Niebla also lived in the castle for, for a while and the castle grounds just next to the castle, they started building. And uh, it was also um, a period where they used uh, stones and material from the destroyed castle to build their houses after I think that was after the earthquake or a hurricane or something that happened. I was here two years ago and Niebla had been like on my bucket list for so long and I was so excited to finally get there and it was just pouring down with rain, like pouring, pouring, pouring and the weather forecast did not promise any sun for the next week or so, so I had to leave. I did visit the castle, uh, I actually ended up like hiding in one of the chambers for like half an hour <laughs> to wait for the rain. Um, so I'm super excited to be here now and I get to explore it a bit more in depth. And uh, one of my favorite things is that uh, they're dog friendly. So baby Atlas is with us exploring, uh, being a pain in the ass. Last time I was here with my last dog Ayla. So it's, uh, it's nice to come back here again and finally see, see the place with some sun and the birds are singing and are happy to eat. We're now gonna go up to the top of the Torre del Homenaje, which is the tower that got destroyed first by the Lisbon earthquake and later also from a big hurricane. It's windy up there. Check out the views. We were also able to go underground, which was really cool and we were surprised how many rooms and how far we could walk down there. I'm 
go inside the wall town now. It's uh, two kilometers of city walls with five doors. So this is uh, Puerta del Socorro, which we're gonna enter now. These are the ruins of uh, San Martin Church, which I've been really fascinated about since the first time I saw them. And um, apparently it was used both as a mosque, it's been used as a synagogue, and then a church at the end. This is uh, Santa Maria de Granada Church. It uh, used to be a Roman temple before it was a Visigoth Basilica, then a Muslim uh, mosque, an Islamic mosque, uh, and then it turned into um, a Catholic church. It actually still has Roman elements in the church, which is very cool. Puerta del Agua and as you can tell when you walk through it you get to see so Rio Tinto is actually a red river um, it flows up from uh, a village called Rio Tinto uh, Minas de Rio Tinto actually I think it's called uh, I was there a few years back and it's absolutely amazing there you can really see how the river flows all red like deep orange red and uh, it's basically because of minerals and uh, things in the soil where the water flows that creates this, uh, I don't know if you call it a chemical reaction, I'm not that good at... Uh, Geology? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, uh, the fun fact is that there's hardly any oxygen in the water and uh, like the environment that it creates is very similar to one on Mars. So uh, Rio Tinto and Minas Rio Tinto, the village, has uh, gotten a lot of interest from NASA. And uh, if you have the chance to go, I really recommend it. Uh, we won't be able to go on this trip now, but I promise you we will go there and film a vlog, but maybe next year or the year after, I don't know when it will be. But uh, it's, I think it's only like an hour or something from Seville, so it's an easy day trip. This is Puerta del Bui, which is, is, uh, which is one of the other um, uh, entrances through the city walls. It's really beautiful. Niebla is less than an hour from the Portuguese border. And it kind of feels a bit like Portugal too, with all the tiled houses, so typical to Portugal. We crossed it when we came into Niebla and uh, it's basically an ancient, ancient Roman road connecting Seville and uh, Huelva. Um, we, uh, we see Rio Tinto here, and, which I talked about before. I'll actually drop the link to, to the blog post I wrote about uh, Rio Tinto and Minas Rio Tinto if you want to go there. Uh, it maps out in Huelva, in Huelva city. And uh, I, if I'm not wrong, I think it was the 18th uh, century when uh, the English had a huge mining company that transported uh, from uh, the mines in Rio Tinto and out to the port in Huelva. This bridge was originally built in uh, between the year 98 and 117 AD. And even though it's been reconstructed like multiple times, obviously, it still baffles me that something that old can still be standing. It's quite imp 
impressive. Like we're about 50 kilometers south of Minas Rio Tinto, and uh, if you look at the rocks here and the color, it's still quite orangey. Uh, it's a lot deeper orange and more towards red up there, but uh, it's traveled quite far to still color up like this. So yeah, um, we will uh, end our visit to Niebla here. We are heading to Portugal. So uh, that's where we'll see you next. Uh, for now, I really hope you liked the vlog. I hope you make the trip to Niebla. I see way too little tourists for being such a historic city or village or town or call it what you want. Um, so yeah, see you in Portugal. Adios. <laughs>